Hi, and good morning to everyone that has joined us here on GXP. What a beautiful Sunday this is, and as well, what a beautiful season we are currently going through as Christians. I mean, it's the Lent season. So it is a beautiful season. You know, that moment when you just, you know, go away from everything you love and just create more time for God and, uh, you know, reflect on your relationship with God. So it is a beautiful season and, of course, another beautiful day. And if you're out there and you're able to see the sun, the green, just thank God for the gift of life. Welcome to GXP. My name is Carolyn Flower and I'm never alone in studio. I'm always with my... DJ. Good morning, Clara Carol. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Lena Seiko Kombe, DJ QT56. It's a great honor um, to be here yet on another beautiful Sunday here, meeting our people that get to watch us every single Sunday. We do appreciate you that, you know, putting the time to watch mm -hmm. NTV GXP every Sunday uh, right there. Now, today we have quite the, the show lined up, I think. Uh, and I <laughs> believe those that are watching us are actually going to have good value for their time uh, this beautiful Sunday. We'll be discussing some hot topics and also bringing in some uh, perspective from a man of God on some of these topics mm -hmm. right there. But of course, before we get into all of this, um, yeah. we're in the Lent season. Yeah. Um, have you noticed any difference in our Christians uh, out there you know, due to the Lent uh, season right here? Uh, okay, um, to be very honest mm -hmm. with you, um, for you to be able to notice this, you need to be of a certain Christian denomination. Mm -hmm. Because, um, as you know, in our country, we have s so many different denominations. Yeah. And we have that denomination that believes, mm. I, okay, it's not really a denomination, <laughs> it's a faith that yeah. only I mm. will do this if the Spirit mm. tells me, if I hear from God. Yeah. But um, from my side as Pakaro, I, I, I just find that I am... Yeah, I, I feel a difference because just when I want to do something that I've already said I'm not going to do, I get that reminder, hey, mm, get, get, exactly. it's the season, <laughs> it's the season. <laughs> but I'm sure we will feel the Lent season towards the end of the Lent season as yeah. people prepare and for Easter. And also, I, I, what I've noticed is of late, there's a certain way people are humble. Yes. There's this peace and tranquility and people actually humble, they are polite, well done, well done. Yeah, we should, after Lent, stay like that and uh, <laughs> don't go switching pages yes. as soon as Lent is done. Now. Mm -hmm. um, in today's show, uh, we are going to be uh, looking at the youth. Yeah. You see, I like this topic particularly at this time because UACE results are out. out the ones yes. we call SX results, they're mm -hmm. out. That means you have so many children mm -hmm. crossing over to university. And, and, and we also mm -hmm. uh, have our little ones who have joined high school uh -huh. and the whole excitement of, you know, you know being in high school, you're yeah. not with kids of <laughs> seven. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so um, today yeah. we'll be discussing uh, topics mm -hmm. that are basically um, looking at the youth right there. Why I like um, targeting mainly those that are joining campus for the first time yeah. is, you notice many come from these very strict, stringent families, mm -hmm. and then when they cross over to campus, they're in a hostel, and they have now the freedom to make the rules. And that's where things go crazy, because from this whole tight micromanaged environment, they go to one which is open book. And they tend to make so many mistakes. So, uh, joining uh, us... J j yeah. Just to interrupt you a little bit, mm -hmm. let me just pose a question, Q. Yeah. Um, if your child got to that stage in life, mm -hmm. would you encourage them mm -hmm. to get to hostel or you would prefer them schooling from home? You have your bedroom, you have your bed. <laughs> it's the same thing in a hostel. We live in Uganda. We live in no. Kampala. I think, <laughs> I think, I think uh, personally, I would mm -hmm. encourage them to go to hostel because... There's lots you learn when you interact with people from different places, different manners and all that. But I would put in a lot of guidance, a lot of um, prayers in that thing. And also try to look at what co-curricular activities are getting involved with. Are they in church? Are they serving? Are they, like you try to push them towards a certain direction. All I direction. can say, my God, may God give me the grace because I think mm. I would get a smaller bed and pack in my daughter's <laughs> hostel. And bring the lecturer. And be there and make sure. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, joining us in the show today will be uh, Pastor Zen Mugabe, who will be uh, who's from Watoto Church, is the youth pastor there. And we'll be talking about pastoring young people on this particular show. But before I think... And, and to also yeah. help the young people continue to be attracted to church. To church, yes. Which is becoming a problem. Yeah. By the way, of, of late church is becoming... And, and you know, as we were having a prior conversation mm -hmm. with Pastor, yeah. there's something he mentioned that humans are not meant... 
to be isolated. To be isolated. And that's something we'll definitely discuss at length when he's finally with us here. Let, let's go for a short musical break. So if I can bring Pastor over and we get into the conversation of the nitty gritty into this as topic. As soon as possible. As soon as possible. I am <laughs> bubbling up some questions and I believe he has the right answers with him. Let's go yes. for some music and we'll be back with Pastor Zen. We're still watching GXP with me, Carol Flower and DJ Q. And right now, we would like to introduce to you our guest for today, and that's Pastor Zain. Yeah. Welcome to the show. It's such a great honor to have you. Thank you, Carol. Thank yeah. you, guys. Really, really excited to be here. It's actually exciting to have a youth <laughs> pastor here. <laughs> and from a very youthful, from a church full of young people. Yeah. Yes, full of young people. Yeah. We're, we're blessed. We have lots of young people that come into our buildings and mm. it's a privilege, honestly, to steward that because it's from God. It's a, we don't take it for lightly. granted. Yes, we don't yes. take it for granted. Yeah. That's yeah. right. And it's interesting because when I was uh, young, I used to go to mm. uh, Watoto mm -hmm. and Today, when I, as we're growing up, like when I look at my entire team, we're well, like the young people then, yeah. the teenagers. <laughs> like, and like literally 90% have rings on their fingers and you're like, oh, okay. cool vibes. Yeah, <laughs> we cool vibes. We've yeah. grown. We have grown. I mean, the friends were telling me about Ronnie. Mm. Uh, man, that guy was my youth pastor, actually. Is it? Yeah. 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 Wow. And when I joined Watoto when I was 11 years old, 12 years old, yeah, the mm. guys that were taking us through. So it's a, it's a blessing. Yeah, Ronnie used to come to our school, pick us up and take us to different schools for ministry mm -hmm. like guys come yes. <laughs> it was a blessing yeah, that, a was blessing. that was a blessing but we are very blessed to have you on the show Thank because you. today as um the youth is the biggest in terms yes. of population yes and yet facing the most challenges living a life of lies mm -hmm. being exposed to so much good yes. and so much yes. more yes and this has um affected the spirituality amongst young people yeah. that church is no longer seen as a place of worship or yeah. as a, like even god is no longer seen as god it's mm. like someone yeah. somewhere there yeah. this is more cool than yeah. more cool yeah. which is quite unfortunate because yeah. Very. The, the, the fear of god is the beginning of oh, wisdom yes yeah, so thank you and maybe before we start the conversation can yes. you just briefly tell us about yourself who yes. you are and yes. when you become a yeah. When you became a youth pastor, uh, yeah. what attracted you to be a youth yes. pastor? Yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Well, very excited to be here. My name is Zen Mugabe. Uh, some, m one, many of our young people like to call me PZ, Pastor Z. Yeah, so That's I, cool, I, yes, I'm married. I'm married <laughs> to one wife every day. One wife every day. We uh, have a beautiful daughter, uh, nine months. And uh, really excited about being here today, excited about what God is doing um, through the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. And, um, you know, been at, uh, you know, Watoto Church since I was 11 years old, 12 years old. Uh, gotten the privilege to be the youth pastor now for three years. Great. And so I pastored through COVID. You know, someone once said, man, those were tough times. <laughs> someone once said, you do not motivate through crisis you lead through crisis. When I had that, I got my socks, pulled them up, and I said, let's go. And so uh, uh, God has been lead. faithful. I have no to lead. No time to motivate. No I time to, to motivate, lead. lead. So you're like, uh, you're, I would maybe say you're literally like Moses during the liberation of the youth. <laughs> <laughs> we have to go to the Red Sea. All right. This side, it's huge. This side, it's yes. like a mistake. We are covered but by God the is with us. God is with us. Yes. Wow, so it's been great. It's yeah. been great till okay. now. Yes. Yeah, that's great. Now, what I wanted to find out is, see, um, Watoto Church is more geared towards the youth, and, yes. and you know, you, you have a lot of activity going on with the yes. younger generation. Yeah. So the question I want to figure out to ask is, why is Watoto so focused on, on, the, on the younger yes. generation? What, yes. what is this, why is that your target <laughs> exactly? <laughs> Amazing. Mm. Do you know that uh, you know all Jesus' disciples? were not older than him. They were all very young. When you actually read through the Bible and, uh, you know, having conversations with different people and, and getting to understand how young these people were, mm. most of them were actually very young men. Mm. The pictures lie. You know, when we see the, the photography, yeah. it shows that the disciples were men with long beards yeah, yeah, and gray yeah. hair, yeah. but they were actually very young men. They were very many, uh, they were very young men. So, Watoto Church is um, riding on the word of God because we know that the 
that the next generation mm -hmm. is that 12 year old that 11 year old that 14 year old that 15 year old they might be broken but God has a plan for their lives mm -hmm. and God has placed something on the inside of them and so because of, of that we have seen very many young people like me mm -hmm. come through church the church doors messed up broken and honestly the world personally was beating me right center left right mm -hmm. but when I walked into those doors I experienced what I never experienced before. Mm -hmm. And at 11 years old, I remember the heavens, gates, and hells flamed yeah. those days, that drama. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was really painting a picture of heaven and hell and how we need to behave on earth. And men, my heart was touched, and I gave my life to Christ when I was 11 years old. Wow. And so, because of that, Watoto Church, the church in Uganda, should be able to give young people a platform to explore and learn what God has placed on the inside of them. And that's why it's very important. You and I are going to grow old, and we're going to get into other things. But, you know, the younger kids are the ones coming up. You know, they need to be given a platform, and they and need they to be trusted. And they have a lot of time, so it's and energy. energy. And they use it well. <laughs> and energy. But, but, but yeah. before we really get to the youth, yeah. you as pastor Zen, yes. I'm sure you had so much yeah. to do. Mm. Why did you choose? to become a youth pastor, what attracted you? Because it's interesting, when mm. you're young mm. and a pastor, you're not so cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm I know. So what I you attracted you? Yeah. No, I'm not saying that you're not cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah I get it, definitely. Like, if you tell your peers, oh, I'm going to be a pastor, yeah. what? You're like, what? 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 Your career, boring. You know, you yeah. know, it yeah, 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 it's boring. Yeah. Honestly, growing up as a young as a young man, I grew up with a single mom. I saw her struggle through life. My dad left when I was seven years old. Oh. And I had a very challenging teenage season mm -hmm. of my life. And I honestly don't even remember what happened between 10 and 18. All I know is it was a lot of go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. Tears, 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 tears. I did not know where to look. I didn't know God until, you know, I came to Watoto Church and, and, that, and, and that was really uncovered for me. But because of that, growing up in church, looking at the brokenness of, of you know, of young people, but also remembering what I went through, um, it got me really, really interested in ministry. And so I started as a, a worship leader. I traveled um, with the Watoto Children's Choir. And the Watoto Children's Square really was mostly grow you as a leader, go out, tell people about Jesus, but also talk to people about what's happening in Uganda and what's happening with the women and the children. And seeing the transformation mm -hmm. that the church was doing mm -hmm. really caught my heart. And I was like, I want to be part of this. Wow. And honestly, when I came into church, it was not so much I want to be a pastor, I want to be a pastor. Like you said, mm -hmm. it's not something that's cool, eh? You know? <laughs> when you say I'm a pastor, sometimes people go like, oh, there we go. We cannot even have a, a serious conversation with this person because they are as holy as thou. They are Jesus' cousin. People, <laughs> us people usually like to say. Um, but. going to be Deputy Jesus. Yes, Deputy Jesus. But honestly, looking at the transformation that wa was happening in the church, I was like, I want to be here serving in whatever capacity. Not so much a pastor, but I just want to be here to serve God's people. Is there, is there anything else you're doing apart from being a pastor? Yes, so I'm a worship leader at Watoto Church. Right. And I have that privilege of leading people in worship. But I also am part of the creative, you know, creative team that you know puts things together so it's a privilege and it's an honor oh, wow. yes that's great amazing yeah so coming back now to the topic of yes. the day yes what do you think is affecting our society the most mm. that is having such a um, big negative i don't want to say entirely but a big negative impact mm. on the young people <sighs> Lots of, we have an identity crisis mm -hmm. that is going on in the world, but an identity crisis that's happening in Uganda. Mm -hmm. uh, young people don't know who they are, and that has been modeled in the homes, in the schools, mm -hmm. on social media, in the community. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of noise that is going on. And I think, not even think, I know, because of that, then the wrong agendas are coming up yeah. and they are dis, 
you know, distorting what is already happening. Mm -hmm. Because if you're a young person and you're from a broken family, what's going to happen? You're going to go on social media mm -hmm. and you're going to see this thing and it's going to tell you this is who you should be. Mm -hmm. Because this has happened to your mom or your dad is not present, so mm -hmm. you can become this. Mm -hmm. And so what I feel is a broken community equals broken people. Mm -hmm. And so it's unfortunate that in the times that we are in, prior COVID, Yes. You know, we were talking that really yeah. everything that's going on right now mm. existed. Yeah. But somehow COVID amplified, amplified everything. Mm. And so broken families, broken, you know, uh, school heads and teachers, yeah. um, social media pushing its agenda is a result of the broken young people and youth that we see now. And causing a lot of confusion mm. among yes. the young people. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yes, so uh, there is a lot to do, mm. a lot to pray for, and yet, actually, we've, uh, you know, we, we've, we've been saying that mm. the next leaders of Uganda that are going to transform this nation are the people that are probably 18, 16, 15 right now, but are they ready to do that? But what is our responsibility as the church? Mm -hmm. What is our responsibility as parents? Mm -hmm. What is our responsibility as school heads and directors mm -hmm. in making sure that we prepare the next generation of our country to be the, mm -hmm. that godly transformational leader? Wow. Yeah. Deep, 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 deep. <laughs> 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 it's, it's the next leaders are at the moment 16, mm -hmm. 17, 18. I'm actually looking into my house. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah. Mr. President yeah. is here. Honestly, <laughs> when you think about it, yeah. Carol, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's the reality. It's the reality, mm -hmm. and I think we need to get to that point in life where we pray for proper leadership in our children's lives, but I think we also need to be very exemplary because at the end of it all, yeah. if mm -hmm. we get wrong leaders, then we have a messed up country. True. Done. Totally. Mm -hmm. If we have great leaders, then we have a great country. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask how are young people responsible for their mistakes or the mistakes they make mm -hmm. and how do we hold them uh, accountable? Yes. yes. I mean, God has given all of us a will and um, when you accept Jesus in your life, but even before you accept Jesus in your life, honestly, you know that you're on to a wrong, a wrong path. Mm -hmm. Very many, um, like very many young people are definitely going through some, you know, troubling things, and we talked about them, you know, identity, and uh, uh, there are so many things that are, so many agendas that are, you know, coming up. Mm -hmm. I think they should not throw the responsibility first on the parent and the country they are in. Oh my goodness, I'm in a third world country. I'm not as exposed. That shouldn't be the thing. I think every young person needs to understand that everything that they do. Number one, it's their responsibility. Why? Because I know that parents have done their best. I mean, if you're a parent and you have not done your best, it's time to pull up your socks mm -hmm. and be a model True. Of, of what you want to see. Mm -hmm. Because we do not parent for ourselves yeah. as parents. We parent for the community. Mm -hmm. We parent for those workplaces. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. right now you guys are here. Okay. Someone actually invested time in you and that is why you're in this place and you're passing on to this generation the responsibility number one should not always be oh my dad was not there mm. that is why i behave like this yeah. oh for us we were poor mm -hmm. that is why i was not you know exposed and that's why i am the person that i am mm -hmm. oh my parents did not take me to a good school mm -hmm. yeah. you know ah, you know i stayed home for a very long time that is why i'm failing that's why i'm a failure the responsibility is on you as a young person. It shouldn't first be, oh, the country, I mean, oh, the parents, oh, you know. Which you know, is actually a very that. common... It, it, yeah. That's why I'm starting there, Carol, because in this generation, we have so many young people that don't take responsibility for their actions. Yeah. True, true. It is always, I'm the child, you're the parent. I'm the child, you're, you're the, the teacher. Mm. I'm the child, you're the government. Do something about my welfare. Mm. It shouldn't be that. We all have a responsibility. And because you're a teenager and you're a young person mm. and you know exactly what is wrong and what mm. is right, the first person to point at mm. is it's yourself. yourself. You know, every time you do this, mm -hmm. all these three fingers are pointing at you. So every time you start going, oh, that person, oh, that person, mm. these are the three fingers are pointing at you. And so the responsibility is on you as a young person. Mm. Number two, 
understand what you're doing is wrong and do something about it. Mm. That might be in the company that you're keeping. Mm. Maybe they are the kinds of people that are actually swaying you mm. and they're taking you to the wrong direction. Maybe it is what you watch. Mm -hmm. mm, exactly. Yes. Mm. When you go on social media, we follow very many people that we don't even know and they will never know us. But they are depositing something in us through the pictures that they post, mm -hmm. conversations that they have on Twitter, and so if you're a young person and you know honestly that contradicts with your values, mm. the first responsibility is I am following the wrong person. Yes. I should be the one pressing and subscribe. Mm -hmm. I should be the one that is saying, you know what, I am going to filter mm -hmm. what I watch yes. on social media. Mm -hmm. I am disrespectful to my parent. I don't think I talk to my mom right. I think I need to get in touch with my dad. Mm -hmm. I think I should pay attention in school. Mm -hmm. I think I shouldn't eat tuition. I think I should actually understand where my mom and dad are at mm -hmm. and the hassle they are going through and put in more effort. Yeah. So, at the end of the day, mm. it starts with you. Mm. Wow. It starts with you as a young person to, um, to, to, to get better. Mm. Wow. Now, what, what you see, there might be a parent watching us right now. Yes. And they have this child that is literally going unruly on them and they yeah. don't understand what could be causing mm. this kind of mm. outburst or this kind mm. of behavior. Yes. So, and you've been in that space of working with the youth. So I just want to throw us a few pointers. What do you think are the triggers mm. for some of these habits and, habits behaviors. and behaviors mm. we are mm. seeing in society? What are the tr main trigger points you yes. think are causing what we are seeing nowadays? Right. Mm. It's unfortunate that sometimes the parents are the cause. Mm. And as parents and as older people, we definitely need to make sure that we are modeling. Mm -hmm what we want our kids and our teenagers to be. Okay. For example, mm -hmm. if you're at home and you're a mom and you're a dad mm -hmm. and you come back at 1 p.m. and your child is home from morning maybe to evening and they go to bed and they don't see you and you don't interact with them, mm -hmm. you don't talk to them, you are literally not present, mm -hmm. that can be a trigger. The fact that you're so not present. So it's your shadow that is mm -hmm. present. Yes. But the physical you is not there. That's I think very that, that's where you end up with yes. the, the, the kids are like, oh, my parents don't love me, they don't have time for me. Yeah. Actually, okay. there's someone okay. who once made a yeah. statement recently, mm. um, said, today apartments are raising our kids. Yeah. <laughs> Walls. <laughs> yes. TV. Yes. TV. Yes. Social media, WhatsApp, yes. mm. statuses are actually raising our kids. And so mm. one of the triggers and one of the things I know, you know, working with young people is if you are present, at least I understand that very many times parents are busy. Mm. Honestly, you're trying to get from one job to another. Mm. Why? Because you're trying to give them a life, mm -hmm. you know? I think it is very important for you to take up a day. It can be a Saturday or a Sunday, or an hour, mm -hmm. you know, every day. Mm -hmm. And just sit down with them and ask them this question. How are you doing? Wow. Mm. How are you doing? Mm -hmm. I am interested in you. Forget what you've done. I just want to know. I'm interested to mm -hmm. understand how are you doing. Mm -hmm. And they'll be able to tell you. You know, they'll be able to tell you. And so, unfortunately, sometimes we are. The other trigger is naturally mm -hmm. when young people are growing up, they go through hormonal changes. True. Mm -hmm. Things change in their bodies, and so there's lots of insecurities, mm -hmm. uh, lots of bullying at school, True. lots of social comparison. Mm -hmm. When they go on social media mm -hmm. and, you know, they look at Carol, you know, beautiful, mm, they're like, I want to be like Carol. Mm -hmm. I think I want to be as light as Carol. Mm -hmm. But if the parent has not told their daughter that despite the fact that you're dark, mm -hmm. you're beautiful, they will go on social media and start to compare. And, and then when for, they for hear, confidence elsewhere. Yes. Yes. And with then probably when they meet Carol one day, mm -hmm. Ah, then Carol says, you're so beautiful. By the way, you speak really well. Mm -hmm. How old are you? Oh, I am 15 years old. Oh, there is something ahead of you that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And so working together as a community is also very, very important. If you don't work together as a community, mm -hmm. those, are, those are triggers. And so mm -hmm. I think it is very, very key, very, very important to, for us to nurture an environment as parents, as teachers, mm -hmm. an environment that can get our kids to a place where we want them to become mm. but also we need to understand that uh, we need to be there we need to talk you need to With speak the into their lives mm. you know let's not allow the walls and social media to, to take on. Our and, and maybe uh, and, and maybe on that note mm. I, I just want to ask when would be the best time for the youth to I, I know phones are, are, are 
becoming an as a necessity. Yeah. But mm. must you give your youth or teenage child a phone? Is it the I best mean, time? It's it, we're, 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 we're in a world that is fast moving. Yeah. Uh, as, 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 as far as also you as a parent, I know, you want your child to be informed. Yes. You want them to know what's going yes. on in the world. Yes. And some of them use their phones to do assignments, for commun to communicate to you. Yes. You know, so phones, mm. fortunately, are an, a necessity. Yeah. Mm. But I think what goes on here while the child is texting and whatever he's doing mm. is, is the state of their heart. What we need to focus on the most mm -hmm. is training the heart. The Bible says, train up a child mm -hmm. in the way they of should, the of yes. the Lord. The way they should be. So that when they grow up, they don't depart. depart. Mm -hmm. Now, as parents, we definitely have to create rules mm -hmm. and boundaries. Mm -hmm. yes. If you realize that your kids don't deserve the phones because of what's going on at home, and I mean that is really case by case. Mm -hmm. it's, it's unique for every child. Yes. Then you don't give them the phones. Or, I have friends who tell me, my kids, mm -hmm. when they come back from school, I don't give them the phone. I use at least a week to first connect with them. Mm. Because kids will show up after school, after boarding, I'll say, Mommy, I want the, the phone. I've missed a lot. You know? Like, no, no, no. Let's catch up. Let's talk. There are rules. Some friends of mine have a table. When they get into the door, phones go in that bowl. We are going to sit at the table and we're going to talk as a family. As a family, true. So I think it is very important to set boundaries, mm. but yet understand mm -hmm. that we are raising a generation that is informed and needs to be informed. So mm -hmm. yeah. taking away the phones may not be the solution, but training the heart, but also creating boundaries. Oh, and, and, and also lines. creating contrameasures for those yeah. very guys. Contrameasures. Some yeah. parents have gone ahead and they have literally gone in the kids' phones and they have, you know, filtered. Mm. You know, you filter and you put a password. Mm. You know, I used to do that for my, my cousin. But like, I get the phone. If I know they are going to use it, when they left, uh, they, they left uh, uh, them with me, you just really mm. make sure that you filter what they're watching. Because I'm, I mean, the, devil, the devil is up to you. Is that what? Yeah. 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 So now that, that, that brings us now to the whole church idea yes. and the youth. Yes. Because now if the youth is not close to church, then mm. there's a problem. Yeah. There's a, there gap. a gap. There's yeah. a huge <laughs> gap. And how is Watoto helping, for example, or even mm. the church at large? Yeah. What are they doing to mm. attract mm. and keep the youth? Because it's, mm. it's one thing to attract the youth to church, yeah. and it's and the other to keep them rooted in, in church. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's mm. an amazing question. Mm. As Watoto church, and this is what I believe the entire church should be, mm. I think the church should be alive but not wild. They're two different statements. Okay. I'm break trying to... Down, please. Yeah. Break, break. <laughs> not break, wild, break them. But, but huh? alive. alive. But alive. Okay. okay. You know when, uh, when you see a plant, mm -hmm. it's living, it's healthy. What does it need? Mm -hmm. It needs water, it needs the sun, mm -hmm. it needs to be put in a pot, it needs some care. Have you gone to a bush before? I mean, there are lots of plants that are all over, one yeah, growing on top of each other, yes. you know, and that is wild. Mm. What we do as we're to church is, number one, preach the gospel to these young people. Tell them, you know what, this is what the Bible says. Mm. But we say a phrase, come as you are, broken as you are, come. Mm. Very many young people would give their lives to Jesus and they have messed up. Mm. Maybe some of them have tattooed all their bodies. Uh, maybe their dress code is, is not as, as proper for church. Mm. But, you know, we tell them, now that you've given your life to Jesus, we have people that can walk with you. Mm. And so we welcome every person that comes to church. Now, we may not condone the behavior and we may speak against the behavior, using the word of God, mm. but everyone is welcome. Now, a church that is alive is a church that believes in young people, trusts in young people, teaches the word of God, creates certain events or co-curricular activities that are growing the teen's mm. life. I mean, we have small groups, mm. cells. This is where young people do life together. Mm. They sit in their homes, they talk about Jesus, it is very important because while they do that, they have meaningful relationships as parents, I know. As parents, you don't want to your kids to be associating with people that are the wrong company. True. True. What Water True. Church has done, and I believe the whole church in the world and in Uganda needs to do, is number one, for parents to open up their homes mm -hmm. so that they invite your, your kids' friends 
to come and sit there, have a good time, read from the Bible, eat, laugh, play games, but as a parent, you actually connect with with them. them yes. We need True. that. Mm. And so small groups are very key and very, very important. We have things like camps where when kids come back from, you know, from school, school yeah. we get them in one place. And the idea is number one, peer influence. But number two, really preaching the gospel. Number three, dealing with some things that might be going on in their lives. Mm -hmm. Most of the kids that come for these camps are drug addicts. Mm. Some of them are struggling, mm -hmm. you know, in their relationship with their parents. Some of them have had a terrible time at school and yeah. honestly, they just need to come in a, a space where they feel, mm. you know, released and they mm. can talk about issues. Mm. <laughs> and so those are some yeah. of the things that we do. Camps are very, very important. But also, at every campus, every Watoto campus, currently we are 16 campuses yeah. and the new one is in Ginger, which is we just launched that. Every campus has a youth service. How important is that for a church mm. to actually have a youth service is because they are unique. Mm. They need very specific discipleship. Mm. How you worship in the adults church is it's totally different, different how you will engage yes. young yes. people. Yes. You know, there should be some games. There should be interaction. Mm. You should hear what they think. You need to ask very hard questions mm. to kind of understand where they are at, you know, yeah. uh, as far as, uh, you know, you know, maybe IQ or what they think about certain things in life. Mm -hmm. But also, and what they think of life. Yes. Uh, it's, uh, it's but also engage them with the Word of God. True. Because the Word of God is the standard. Mm -hmm. Is the standard. And so yeah. those are some of the things that, that, that we do. You, you know, we've, uh, mm. we partner with different, you know, churches to reach young people. You know, as a church in Uganda, we have to be united if we are going to reach the young people. Yeah. Our nation is very young. It's 17% are young people. Mm. You know, so it's very important for us to create uh, activities for them to participate. Wow, amazing, 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 amazing stuff. We're getting deep into this whole entire conversation, especially yes. touching on to the youth. But before we get more into this, allow us to go for a very short musical break. And we, when we come back, we still are with Pastor Zain, and we get to discuss a little bit more as we wrap up the show about, you know, this entire topic about pastoring the youth. We'll come back from that uh, short musical break right there. We're still with Pastor Zain uh, from Watata Church, the youth uh, church, uh, youth pastor. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> the youth pastor at Watata Church right there. And he's been here answering very interesting questions yes. uh, regarding to the youth but now as we wrap up so yeah. our time is really fast spent I just want to ask one a final question from my side um, yeah. what do you th what is the future yes. for the young generation yes. in what 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 where yeah. do you see things going what, what's the future like I mean I, 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 I my prayer and I believe that we are raising up uh, young people that are going to be godly transformational leaders. Mm -hmm. We want young people that are going to transform the shape and the look of our city, mm -hmm. but also the world. Mm -hmm. What does a godly transformational leader look like? One that is responsible, mm -hmm. one that is confident, one that is bold, mm -hmm. you know, one that means what they say. Mm -hmm. They do not just speak, speak, but they do, and they influence others to godliness. Yeah. That's the kind of young person that we see. I mean, right now we are raising them and they're 13, they're 14, they're 15. But for us, we don't see them as 16-year-olds and 13-year-olds. Mm. We see them as the next president. We see them as the next, uh, you know, ministers and politicians mm. that are actually going to make the right decisions. Why? Mm. Because they love God and their hearts are broken for the communities that they live in. We are not really uh, here to, you know, as a solution, mm -hmm. you know, but this is what I believe. I believe God and the word of God is the solution and God will definitely shape the young people in how he wants to do it. So we are just conduits and we're just vessels mm -hmm. that God is using. But the other thing is we want to reach schools. It's yeah. very interesting that, you know, Carol asked me that question. We want to reach schools. Yeah. And we want to reach close to 300,000 young people in schools where we go and we disciple them. Mm. We go and we share morals and we help them in their character. You know, someone once said, your talent, the things that you know, mm -hmm can take you places, but mm -hmm. your character sustains you there. Yeah, true. And so one of the things that we want to do is we want to build a godly character in our young people yeah. mm -hmm. through reaching schools, but also, you know, just 
coming alongside teachers because I know that the work of teaching is not easy. Mm. I mean, you know, mm. most of these teachers mm. have the kids more time than the parents. Yes. Yes. And so we need to make sure that we work with the, the teachers, mm. you know, encourage them, but also call out greatness in what they are doing. They so, the I mean, that life. is the future. As what the church, we will continue to reach the lost. Mm -hmm. We will continue to disciple the lonely. Mm -hmm. We will continue to reach the least. People that really, you know, the world looks at and is like, you amount to nothing. We will continue to reach those people. And in all those people, we have our young people. Amen. And so we'll continue to do that. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Zen. And thank you so much. Um, for all that you're doing for the young people and we also thank God for you, thank you. that called you, ordained yeah. you and you also listened and <laughs> followed. <laughs> thank, you. thank you so thank much you. and to everybody that tuned in to GXP today. Thank you so much for being part of this show and following our conversation and if you are there and you have questions to ask please don't Hesitate, feel free to find us on our Facebook page, which is NTV GXP. Inbox us, tell us what is that pressing issue you'd like us to discuss here on the show. And if you are there, you have great music, you have a great testimony, please feel free to reach us on NTV GXP. 